All right, uh, here we are again at uh, Temple Baptist Church in the Shiloh Sunday School class, and we finally, we have got out of uh, the book of Job last week, and, and now we're starting in on the book of Ecclesiastes, and, and that's liable to be pretty interesting too. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes was written probably about the first millennium, probably a thousand years before Christ in that time frame and and uh, as close as it can be narrowed down uh, about 935 BC I think they figure but as and it was uh, written penned by Solomon King Solomon David's uh, son he was uh, probably by this time an old man he had uh, seen a lot of life and and actually had brought a lot of lot of hard life on himself and uh, he's writing down his thoughts about life at, at, as he's gearing down towards the end of it and, and looking back and seeing things that he's not really happy with. And uh, he, he's talking about that as, as, uh, as, as we go through this. We'll, we'll see these things. And, and it, it makes you think almost that, that he was uh, a miserable kind of a... A person in a deep depression, but we ought not ever lose sight of the fact that at the end of the book, he says that it's the whole duty of man that we should fear God and to keep his commandments. And he's learned that the hard way, we might say, but but he has learned that lesson. And these uh, things that he has written are admonitions for us. They are things to encourage us and strengthen us and a, and a whole lot in a big way to keep our priorities straight because it's so easy in this day and time that we live in to be running rabbits and going here and going there and doing things, everything uh, under the sun, as he says, and not really accomplishing anything in the kingdom of God. And so that's, that's kind of, of uh, where he's at. There in the, in the second verse, the, the lesson actually starts in, in uh, verse 12. But I'm going to look at a couple things there in the first, uh, the prologue, the beginning of, of uh, chapter 1 there, those first three verses, and look at that. Because some of that needs to be explained a little bit, and, and it needs to be uh, understood as, as we go through this, the how and the why of it. So verse 1 there says, The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Down in verse 12, there's another word thrown in there. We'll talk about that in a minute. But he, he, he identifies himself right off the bat as who it is, who's wrote, written this book, the, the son of David. He is writing his, listing his, this is why I'm qualified to do this. And then he says, vanity of vanities. Five times there, that word there is uh, Hebel in the Hebrew, A-B-E-L, I believe is right. And it says, Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. And then he goes into this thing of what profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun or, or in his lifetime. All, all the labor that a man does. What profit is in that. But that word vanity or, or the word preacher there in, uh, in a couple of different translations it's... Uh, it's translated as teacher, and and actually it, it kind of means the same thing. It it it's a word where uh, in the Greek the ecclesiast ecclesia the calling of the church the called out assembly and this it, the root word of that is the teacher or the preacher the one that has called out this assembly that we would call the preacher or pastor today. And so it's very clear when you understand those things who who is is uh, telling the telling these stories here or, or giving us this these lessons. But this vanity of vanities it, it, it just means that it's it's meaningless and and it's just uh, the the vanities here in this particular verse verse two there it's all the same word. And it's just meaningless. And, and this is a man that has done everything. If you wanted to go back and, and really make a big time study out of this, we could go back into 
Uh, 1 Kings chapters 1 through 11 tells the life story of Solomon. Or over in 2 Chronicles chapters 1 through 9, it, it, it reiterates that again. And it tells the whole thing there. And then in 2 Chronicles chapter 9 verse 30, it tells us that he, he was king over Jerusalem for 40 years. So he had some tenure there. And, uh, and he had some, well in fact he had a lot of life experiences there. He, he comes back and, and he goes down through there in verse 9 and he, he, after saying vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, and he repeats it. And then he says, all is vanity. And he, he goes down then and jumps down into verse 9 and he says, the thing that hath been is that which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done. And he says, there's no new thing under the sun. And is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new, it hath been already of old time, which was before. So he's just nailing down the fact that it was, uh, that life, when it was all said and done, and, and as we go through here before we get finished today, and then next week we'll see that, that uh, he laments or bemoans the fact that, that even though this is going, life is like this, that when it's all said and done, the things that come to all of us, that uh, it just it really doesn't matter if we are get if we let things get out of, if we let life get out of perspective. And so anyway, that's where we're 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 at here there. But he begins in verse twelve, and he's talking about the the futility of human wisdom. We all like to think we have some wisdom up to a certain point and. And it's, it's not just a worldly wisdom, but a, a spiritual wisdom. And we need that. And, and he says, as far as worldly wisdom goes, he said, I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. And that kind of throws that word was in there. It's kind of, it sort of throws you a curve, like maybe he wasn't anymore. But when you look at the background of that, it's, it's like me, I've been a carpenter for years and years and years and years and, and I can tell somebody that I was a carpenter back in, in uh, 1970 and that would be true and still yet, even yet today, even though I don't, I'm retired. But that's, uh, that's what that means there and it's not something that contradicts itself and so we really need to understand that. But he, he says there, I... The preacher teacher was king over Israel in Jerusalem. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. And then there's a colon there. And he says, I'm going to say something about that. Those two little dots that are, are there in, in the lesson. That, and we, we'll get to that in a minute. But he said, I gave my heart. He said, I gave my mind, body, and soul to this uh, endeavor to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. He wanted to know the answer to everything. And he was going to hunt for it and hunt for it and hunt for it till he got those answers, he thought. That was what he did. He said, I, I gave my heart. I, I did not back off of anything in, in searching out answers for, the, for these uh, Stuff and he said, and I, you know, I had the wisdom to do it, and not only had the wisdom, but he had the the resources, all the money in the world. He had uh, people that could help him, and he he hunted for the answers to these, the answers to life, and and so many times uh, we can get caught up in that that pretty easy, and and we get the get to asking the whys and. And we've seen in back in the book of Job, we've seen Job asking those same things to the point where he was not content to accept God's will. He he demanded that God would would uh, tell him, you know, he he not to jump back in there too far, but he yet he at the same time Job required that God would speak to him. Well, we don't. That's that's over the line. We, we come to a place where we have to accept God's will in our life and know that sometimes our, our road may have bumps in the road and they may be some pretty good ones. And, but anyway, Solomon was, was, was uh, 
sharing this with these people. And he said, I gave my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. He didn't leave anything out. That, and then he had the colon there, and it was kind of, a, I thought, ironic after all that. He, he said, this is sore travail, or this is hard labor, it's meaningly business, it didn't mean anything. He said, after all that, and doing all that, it really did not mean anything. And uh, But it it's a lot of hard work. And some things that come down to us, there's just no answer to them. We just have to accept it, realize that God has a, a plan, and accept that plan and move on in our life. And, and that can be tough to do. Uh, he said, this sore travail or this... Meaningless business hath God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. And, and that tells me we're all in the same boat. You know, it may not be a fun boat to be in at times, but, but uh, life is that way. And it's up and down, and, and sometimes you're on a mountaintop, and sometimes you're in the valley, and a lot of times you're either going up or down, and, and that's, that's just the way it is. He said, I've seen all thing, I've seen all the works that are done under the sun. I've seen all kinds of works, everything that's that was done. Remember Solomon built the temple? One of the, prob, probably at that time was probably the most magnificent building in the whole world. Uh, when you read what it was and what it looked like when it was done, and and even in fact when after it was destroyed and later on and, and the Jewish people went into exile and they came back and built another temple and the elders that remembered the first temple, they cried over the, the lack of, of uh, beauty in the second temple, how, how, how much less it was than that first temple was. But, but he said, I've seen all the works seen, I have seen all the works that are done under the sun. And behold, it's all vanity and vexation of spirit. It's the same thing. Uh, I talked to a guy here a while back, and, and uh, his, his mindset was that there was never enough knowledge. And, and he kind of left it there for, what do you think about that? And that's kind of the answer I gave him. And he really didn't want to hear it, but it's what the Scripture says, that, that constant seeking after knowledge and seeking after something all the time and never being satisfied, when it's all said and done, it's just it's like vanity and vexation of spirit. Which would be a good time to bring up the point that in neither in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, when you see this word vanity used, it's never used in a sense of being conceited or self-centered. It, it's always in a sense of... of uh, some just being useless, that it's meaningless, that it's a uh, vexation of spirit. There, it's a uh, it's a chasing after the spirit, like uh, like a cold December morning. When when you see a cold December morning, and you can you go outside and you breathe out, and you see that puff of air. Well, that vexation of spirit is just like trying to catch that puff of air and put it back in your mouth. It ju it just cannot be done. And so this is, this is Solomon's point in this thing. He said, Behold, all, all the works, all that, that stuff, this constant seeking after knowledge, uh, it, it's vanity and vexation of spirit. The, the thing about it is that God is all wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the Scripture tells us. And that's, that's, that is where... We our our purpose in life gets skewed, or we get pulled away from that fear of the Lord and from trying to learn about God. We want to. Why do we want to learn about God? Do we want to do it that we might be better servants of His, or that we might just have be better at arguing about Scripture? You know, which is vanity and vexation of spirit. Uh, to move on, that kind of gets into a preaching mode instead of teaching, I think, but. But it's, it's something that we need to know and we need to learn and understand that. He's, and then he goes on there and he said, that which is crooked cannot be made straight and that which is wanting cannot be uh, numbered. And in that part of the, the lesson, he's, uh, he, he's, he's saying that you know bad things happen to good people. They do all the time. 
But bad things happen to bad people. But you know, not not to leave it there. Uh, his his concept here in verse fifteen is is there's really not anything that can be done about that because that's that's life. But yet uh, we'll not leave it there. In that he's just saying that's the way it is. But at the same time, you know, good things happen to good people. Uh, I was sharing with Lyndall about a, a trip I was on yesterday. And when that was all said and done, it all came back and we began to head back from St. Louis up there. It, it turned out it was a good trip. It might not have been, but it, it turned out that it was a good trip. And, and we were all glad when it was all said and done. And so, uh, you know, good things happen to people just like bad things do. And the thing about it is know that God said He'd never leave or forsake us, that He's there with us. And when when we go through these valleys, these these downers sometimes that we hit, we, we need not lose sight of the perspective that God may be trying to teach us something. He might be trying to teach us a little a little patience or you know what he's got his own mind about his lessons. But then he, he comes he jumps he jumps a bunch from there from verse 15, and then he, he begins to talk about the, the futility in, in, uh, in chapter 2 of, of seeking after pleasure and money and all these things. And then he gets off down here in, in verse uh, 12 and he begins to talk about the, how meaningless it is to get after things. You know, we, we can get so involved in getting things that before you know it, we got a whole yard full of things and half of them don't work anymore. And so we, we, uh, we really need not, we need not invest ourselves the time that we have in, in searching after things that are going to be gone. And he begins to talk there in, in verse 12. He starts talking about and, and just to kind of sum it up, because I don't have a whole lot of time left here, is that he's, he's talking about death. He said, it doesn't matter what I have or what I accumulate or what I've done. When it's all said and done, it's all going to belong to somebody else anyway. You know, we don't know. I don't know. You don't know. None of you know what the next minute's going to bring. We can be here right now and gone the next. And, and God does not guarantee us a, another day or, or any, we're not guaranteed anything in that light. And we do, we do not know. But there's no sense in being tore up about what who it's going to belong to after that's over. Because it doesn't matter if you're out here in the city cemetery, there's tombstones from one end of that place to the other, but they're all dead. It, it doesn't matter if they're rich or poor or, or somewhere in between. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people don't know it, but there's a part of the city cemetery out there that it's, it's, it's where it's like a pulper, pulper cemetery and people are buried there and you never know it. Uh, but those people are... they they are just as important to somebody or were that, than the richest person out there. But it doesn't matter when it's all said and done. And that's what, what Solomon said, and that, that this one event happens to, to all of us that in that sense. And then, then when we take that last breath, then, then it's all somebody else's. And he, he talks about that a little bit later in, in the lesson. But he starts out there again, and he, he made this statement that she said, yea, now we're in verse 18, chapter 2, verse 18. He says here, yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun. That, that word, it's a lot more, that word hated, it's a lot more revealing than just to take it at face value there. Because Jesus said over in, uh, in, in the New Testament that, that we should love him even more than our family that 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 he should be the the focus of our life uh even more than our family and he used that word hated there but it's not it's not hated like like i hate you or i i abhor you or i don't want anything i detest you or loathe you 
it, it's just uh, what he's what he has shown here is what he's learning is that he's he has skewed his priorities in life. He has turned he had come to a fork in the road and actually he came to many forks in the road, but he turned away from that and he's realizing that all that I did while I was on the wrong fork over there was was just nothing. He said, then he said, he uses the word because there in verse 18, because I should leave it unto the man, the man that shall be after me, whoever is going to inherit this stuff. Uh, he said, and who knows whether this, this guy is going to be a wise guy or he's going to be a fool. And that's why I said a while ago about the... the Part of the city cemetery out there. Nobody knows. Uh, we we try to uh, plan and and do and and but when it's all said and done, it's all going to belong to somebody else, and we have no, absolutely no control over it. Uh, we were talking after my mother died for a while, and and uh, a lady in, in Sunday school class. Uh, she's over in another class now, but she. She made the comment that it it's all just stuff, and that, and that she was absolutely right. I never have forgot that. In fact, I've wrote it down in several places. You know, all all the stuff it is just that. It's just stuff, and it don't mean anything because it's all going to wear out and tear down and be tore down or break and at some point in time. And he he goes on and he's kind of bemoaning or lamenting here, and he said. Yet he shall have rule over all my labor which I have labored and wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun. And then he makes this comment again. It's all vanity. It just does not mean anything. Uh, it, Poplar Bluff has grown so much now that, that it's a lot different. But, but uh, there was a time when I could have took you out any place you wanted to on 67 Highway and there was not a building out there that I hadn't worked on or helped build. And of course, there's so much now, it's different. But it doesn't really mean anything. Uh, there's, it, it was a job and, and a payday, and it was God's uh, providence to, to help us exist and live. But, but this stuff, it's, it's just meaningless when, when our priority of life ought to be Worshiping and serving God uh, in, in that order. And he said, therefore, and this is after verse 19 there, he said, therefore I went about to cause my heart to despair of all the labor that I took under the sun. And, and you can see the depression building in, in his life in that. And he said, for there is a man whose labor is in wisdom and knowledge and in equity or, or in... in uh, you know, he, he's a smart, a guy that, that's smart and knowledgeable about things. He, he, he's a trader, an equity trader. Yet to a man which hath not labor therein shall he leave it for his portion. This is also vanity and a great evil. That in, and again, he's just pointing out that I, mean, I know it's redundant. I know it's sounding, but that's, that's what this is about. It's that we, the whole lesson is that death is the great equalizer and that it does not matter what we have. It can be, you know, one breath and it's, it's gone and it all belongs to somebody else. And the whole thing is that don't get too attached to this world. Again, we're told we're pilgrims. We're just passing through uh, and not to get too attached to, to anything. And then he goes on there and he says, And for what hath man of all his labor and the vexation of his heart wherein he hath labored under the sun. And he, he carries on with this in another verse in 23. And he, and he says, this is also vanity. That, but then he, he squares around there in verse 24 through 26. And he says, there's nothing better for a man that he should eat and drink, that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. There's nothing wrong with enjoying life. Uh, we try to. Uh, we try to keep our priorities straight. I'm talking about when I say we, I'm talking about my family, my wife and I. And we try to keep our priorities straight and our eyes on the Lord and doing what he, we feel like He would be pleased with us doing. But uh, He gives us time and options to, to enjoy life. 
and and we do. We've seen hard parts of it, but but overall, it's it's been good, and God's been good to us. And He said, uh, "For who can eat, and who else can hasten there and too more than I?" He said, "I've had it all, and and I have that. I have those privileges to do that." But then when it's all said and done, and he talks about that, he said he gets down there again, and he said, this also, even that, is vanity and vexation of spirit. Now, that's, that's the lesson for today. Uh, we'll, we will maybe elaborate on that some later, but for today, we're probably done with this. And uh, you come back and see us at Temple Baptist Church, and, and uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing you and... and uh, Looking at, at chapter 3, chapter 3 of the book of Ecclesiastes is interesting. And I encourage you to come. And, and so anyway, have a good day. Talk to you later.